Good morning, my creative friends. This is Dr. Manette Riordan. I am here painting in my PJs with the last of my second cup of coffee for the morning. Painting in your PJs Live was designed to be a gathering place to come together to create in community, whether you're following along with what I'm working on or working on your own projects. What I love about visual journaling is that it's such a powerful way to get in touch with how I'm feeling, to find new ways to express my thoughts and emotions on the page. And when they're on the page, I can see them, I can deal with them, I can acknowledge, I can release them, and then I find it that I'm better able to manage thoughts, feelings, and emotions off the page as well. So I wanted to start by sharing the finished version of the page that I started yesterday. On the video, I went back and added a little more stencil, a few little words, and um, just a few little more marks on the page to make this feel really finished. Good morning, Judy. Thank you for joining me. So today I want to do something that was inspired by an activity from a woman named Shelly Clammer that I really like. And we're going to be doing some spontaneous word collage. And I want to start, so I'm going to go ahead and use this painty background that I have been playing on here. Get my camera a little bit more focused. And yesterday I recorded a new class called Found Objects, and I had so much fun making collage papers out of just things I found outside on a morning walk, things that I found around the house as well. So I'll have more information coming about that Found Objects class soon. So this was fun. This was a leaf made out of paper clay. This was an old key. I think this was a a clothespin. This was a cat toy. So I had so much fun just making marks on the page and creating some of my own collage fodder. And there were things that worked and things that didn't work. So I've grabbed just a few bits and pieces of things, even including this piece of burlap because I'm wanting some texture this morning. So I'm going to start with some collage bits and then come in with maybe some more color, and then we'll talk about the spontaneous word pieces. Really liking a lot of these. So we'll just kind of see where we can get to this morning. I really loved this piece too. This was from a, a seed pod off a, a funky tree in my front yard, and I broke it in half, and I love the marks that it made. So I had so much fun making this huge stack of collage paper of my own and I want to make some photocopies of a lot of those so I can use them over and over again. So this one was another one. So I just felt like it might be fun to add some collage texture to this page that I started here. So I'm going to dive right into that this morning with really, as usual, just sort of following the path, right, of where the page takes me. So this page had a lot of leftover paint from yesterday's spread on it, and then I was playing. This was a feather that I used as a stamp, created some interesting marks and some other things on here, but I just was kind of, I don't know what my sort of longing for texture was. I took one of my sacred circle designs here because I liked the, the colors. So I'm going to see if I can grab some of that to add to my collage this morning, especially like these circles. And this is going to bring in maybe a little bit brighter color to my palette this morning. Just looking for a few little spots. I don't have to fill the whole page with collage. And before class, I did some journaling to kind of just really start to, before class, before the live stream, did some journaling to just kind of connect with my own heart, 
see how I'm feeling this morning. I feel a little tired, maybe a little anxious, and I'm not really sure what that anxious is um, from. Maybe too much coffee, which can definitely sometimes happen to me. But just kind of leaning into noticing when what happens to me in my email that went out yesterday was about this, about when our minds get too busy. And I tend to have a lot of ideas, and my mind can often feel like a very busy place. And I'm also between projects in my business right now and need to make some decisions and set some dates about other projects. And uh, I have a in-person retreat coming up in my home studio in mid-May, and it's uh, almost sold out, which is exciting. I only have a couple of spots left, so that feels good. So I'm thinking about what's the what's the next thing I need to be focused on. And so what I really felt this morning was that I needed some spaciousness of time to really just do some planning and get some clarity. And just by simply spending 10 minutes doing a little doodling, a little <clears throat> writing, asking myself some great questions. You know, I ask myself simply, how do I feel today? Good morning, Nikki. And by just noticing, <clears throat> excuse me, just noticing how I was feeling, it led me to this, you know, inside and aha that what's needed is a little, a little more focus. My husband and I had a great day on Sunday. We drove up the Poudre Canyon and we went, which is a gorgeous canyon nearby, and we went out to lunch. And um, we started talking about this idea for a new program I want to offer for therapists and coaches. So, you know, we had lots of ideas are swirling. And then yesterday was busy with a lot of practical to-dos. And so I haven't had time to sort of sit down, some more of that burlap, um, and kind of think through those ideas, get some dates on the calendar. And so when I don't have clarity, what happens is that I start to feel that anxiety rise. I feel a little out of sorts. My heart literally starts to feel a little squeezed. And so it's a good sign that it's time to get my journal out or some a big sheet of paper and just really kind of come back to my center and say, okay, what is it that I'm working on? What's the next thing that needs to do? And this is true for personal projects as well as for business projects. And sometimes our underlying overwhelm and anxiety simply comes from one, having too much on our plate. And sometimes it can come from not having enough like we don't know the direction that we're going next, what our next step is. And so giving ourselves permission to just sit and pause. Can be a really valuable use of our time. And Brian Tracy, I think I said this in my email yesterday too, I shared some of my favorite tips on what to do when your mind feels really busy because my mind has been feeling really busy and I needed the tips, but um, he said that 10 minutes of planning can save two hours of doing, and it's so true. I've owned my own businesses for over 20 years now, and what I know is that there is nothing like having a plan, even if the plans change and evolve, that in the moment, if I can do both some short-term and some long-term planning, then I just feel steady, right? I feel steady. I know where I'm going and what I'm doing. And I'm just using glue stick right now to get some of this stuff down on the page. I may come back over the top of all of it with some matte medium, but since where I'm going next is with some words, I'm not sure if I need to do that. I'm loving the, the burlap on here and just noticing some of the fun texture this is creating. And we've had a lot of sort of, you know, classic adulting things. 
that we had to take care of lately. We had to find a, a local attorney to help us get our will restated in the state of Colorado because wills are state specific. And I have to, working with my accountant, obviously tax season is coming. So we've gotten all this stuff to the accountant for taxes. But we also are dissolving our Colorado business or our California business and, you know, restarting it here in Colorado. So, you know, it's just like all these things. And if I'm not present to them, it just can feel like a lot. But when I'm clear about where I'm going and what I'm doing, I feel more spaciousness in my heart and in my head. And then I feel more calm when I know these things are coming when I have a plan. It's when they're lingering, right, without any kind of a plan that I start to feel kind of lost, right? Like my husband calls them open loops. It's we end up with all these open loops. So I'm having fun just filling this page with collage, not really worrying about what's underneath or covering it up. But I definitely am not someone who likes a lot of open loops. In my life, I like things to be finished and complete. So I'm not an artist with a lot of unfinished projects. I may decide not to complete a project and let it go, but I like things to be finished and complete. And so just knowing that allows me to make some, you know, different decisions and notice when I'm feeling amped up, right? Notice when I'm feeling amped up. Okay, so now my decision is, do I want to come in and put collage over this whole page, <coughs> excuse me, and fill that center space. I'm trying to decide if I, do I really want to let all that go? And it feels a little hard to let it go. So I'm noticing I'm holding on, right? I'm holding on. I hear this a lot from people. How can you cover all that up? And it's because when I'm willing to cover it up, I know that something even more magical is coming. And I would say that this type of collage is probably one of um, the more challenging things for me in my art, right? Like I don't necessarily always love the results. It's one of those things I feel like I need to practice and get better at. So allowing myself just play and glue bits of paper on the page is one way. It's actually the only way to get better at the process, right, is to just play. And I'm even thinking this isn't going to need any other color or paint that I'm letting the marks on the pages and the colors that I've chosen be where the direction that I'm going. Let's see. I want, I think, a different texture for here. Maybe some of these things over here. So I love making my own collage backgrounds. I had a ton of fun recording this new class found objects yesterday because it gets my own mark onto the page, right? It means that everything is original. I'm not using anyone else's stamps or stencils, but everything on here is by my own hand and my own design. And that's what really starts to make our pieces feel really original and unique. Like this face, I love her. And it's a recognizable style of another artist, which was perfect for this page. But then there's pages that feel all mine in a different way. And so kind of listening to our own creative voice in that way is also really valuable. And there's something sort of metaphorical here this morning about playing with this collage, filling up this page. And I think I'm going to leave that little dark center open. And I think I am going to come back in with a little bit of paint and see what kind of a mess I can create here before I get to the words. How's everyone else doing this morning? What are you guys working on this morning? And I love building up layers of pages where I had the painty background and now I'm coming in with the collage. I'm going to add a little more paint 
and then I'm going to do some spontaneous word art over the top of it, almost like found poetry. And I'm curious to see what I discover from doing some of this found poetry. Oftentimes messages come to the surface that I wasn't expecting. All right, let me see. I'm feeling like I want to bring back some of that blue to contrast the orange. Let's see what kind of, just adding a little bit of paint. It doesn't feel like it needs a lot of paint. Brush is just a little bit wet. And remember, when you water down your acrylics, you're going to get, especially for a heavy body acrylic like this one, you're going to get a little bit more transparency on the page. So I still want to be able to see some of those patterns underneath. I don't want to lose everything. It's like I need a little more glue under there, that edge, and I don't want to lose my pops of color here, but I want these edges maybe to just, you know, be smoothed out a bit and feel a little bit more like they're part of the design. And I loved this brown paper was a uh, packing paper that I had bought, I think it was from a maybe a, a Copic blending tool that I had bought. And uh, it came wrapped in this funny paper and it just has this magical texture. It worked great for using it as a, a, sten or a stamp for creating textural backgrounds, but I also love, love it on the, the page. So here I have this really pretty messy page, maybe Let's try bringing in just a little bit of this lavender again. Still thinking about those colors of spring. And I just feel like I'm sort of creating a, a happy mess, right? Getting to those the messy middle of the page. And because this is a really spontaneous page, I'm okay with that, right? There's nowhere I need to go here. I don't have a destination in mind. I'm really in the creative process and the creative practice of the page. And I'm thinking I want a pop of orange on here. My water. <coughs> How's everybody else doing this morning? What are you guys up to? Is anybody painting along or collaging along? I'm actually just going to come in with my finger. And I just want to pull that orange that's in my collage bits into just a few other places on the page so it feels like it's not kind of hanging out there all by itself. And I, that just feels a little bit more balanced to me. Interesting symmetry in the colors between these two pages because I started with those colors and those were the background. They've kind of continued on this page and it's can be really fun collaging along and using lots of texture. Awesome. Taking notes. Beautiful. Love it. It can be really fun to stick with um, a palette and see how many different ways you can use a palette. All right. So I have a very funky textural page here. I'm kind of feeling like I want some kind of face or figure on here or maybe even a silhouette of a person to go along with some of my words. My page is very wet. So 
So I'm going to, so I bought over boxes with just small images in them. I love cigar boxes for storing images and so I scour nice beautiful day to collect some walks so I tend to scour uh, stores for old cigar boxes like thrift stores so this box is uh, has a bunch of words in it from over the years so I'm going to see um, and this one popped out right at me right away only from the heart can you touch the sky a quote from Rumi so that feels really beautiful today. Believe in the power of your dreams. Cultivate kindness. The only one holding you back is you. Hmm, the cloud of unknowing. That's kind of where I felt like I was in this lack of clarity. So a lot of great words in here. So I'm going to maybe hold on to some of those. I wasn't necessarily looking for a whole quote. So I, it's a little cloudy outside. There was a beautiful sunrise because it was cloudy, um, and it's supposed to be windy, which means it may be a day for exercising inside. So I'm looking for a figure to go on my page, and this is a very interesting figure of a woman feeding the pigeons. Mm, this is a beautiful, beautiful face. This also has a lot of words in it and some heart opening music. So that feels a little bit like how I was feeling was wanting my heart to open and pour forth. So again, just that intuitive sense of what is it that I want next on the page. So I'm just gonna quickly go through here. This has a lot of really funky things from a gorgeous calendar but not maybe that many faces because this is one of my smaller boxes of smaller images and I have a lot of bigger people. Okay, so let's go with what we have here. I'm hoping to get outside for a walk this morning, Judy, but we'll, we'll see what the weather decides to do. I don't like the wind. So I'm going to set all those words aside. Excuse me. And I'm kind of leaning into this hand opening, heart opening. But I also really love this space and interesting, you know, finding some of these things. And I really, that are in the same color palette. I really love this woman and it's almost like her heart is opening, right? Her heart is opening as she reaches out to feed these pigeons. Okay, so I'm feeling definitely called to this image here. And it's interesting, everything's sort of ending up almost mono, um, monotonal. It's not monochromatic because it's a lot of different colors, but they're all in the same tone. They're a little bit darker shades. There's not a lot of white and brightness on here. I think I love this image. It looks like maybe she's singing. So I'm going to cut this face even more away from her background and what if she's coming up out of this heart it's like I'm singing myself into existence here somehow and this type of collage for me is always so meaningful and impactful right like there's never any mistake there's always powerful stories that rise up to the surface and catch us by surprise. Thinking about where I want this 
on the page. And so what I'm seeing now is I want to lighten up the page quite a bit because I want these images to really stand out. I'm not quite sure yet how these are going to come together. Hmm, kind of liking, like it just feels like this heart opening and expanding that feels really good. But I need to brighten up this page quite a bit. And I think I'm going to do that with a layer of white. And I'm going to decide, do I want to put my images down and paint around them? I don't think so. So I'm going to just get some titanium white here, maybe let it mix a little bit with some of this lavender still on my palette. Okay, maybe. Like I can feel there's still a little bit in there. And I'm looking for a little bit bigger brush. Not that one. Bear with me for just a second. I think maybe just this cheapy chip brush. I'm going to get it a little bit wet and water this down quite a bit so it's going to have just a little bit of color. And then I'm just going to come in over the whole page. So I'm still getting all that nice texture. I'm still getting a lot of those colors underneath. I'm getting some buckling on the page because I did not put matte medium over the top. So next time I would definitely make sure I get that matte medium. So I love this. It just softened everything up and pushed it back to the background without losing all of the detail, right? Without losing all of the detail. And I could even push it back just a little bit more if I wanted to. And if I'm going to add more paint to this, I would definitely come in with a little bit of matte medium in a few of these places. And so now I feel like when I put my images on here, they're going to pop out a lot more without having lost all of the, the beautiful work from the background. So she has this kind of straight edge over here. I'm kind of liking, oh, there's some nice burlap bits sort of sticking up on the page, creating some fun texture on the page. And I was really drawn to this quote from Rumi. And it says, only from the heart can you touch the sky. And so how I'm seeing that is that if I'm spending too much time in my head, being, you know, having a very busy mind, then I'm not connected to my dreams. I'm not connected to my imagination. That so much of that flows from having an open-hearted connection to being in the energy of flow. So again, the page just coming together with a beautiful message. I think I am going to go in over all of this with some matte medium because I'm probably going to want to add some more marks on the page and it's going to work a lot better if I have some matte medium. I love this hand opening to the words. I love this face. Almost looks like she's chanting or singing and so the, the combination of her and the music is beautiful. But I'm also curious of what would it look like if her heart really was open to touching the sky. So that feels really beautiful as well. But there's something about that hand there that also feels important. 
So letting the images tell the story they want to tell. I'm not in control here. Nope, I like it the way that it was. Okay, so let's get some matte medium down on my surface here. And I'm just going to put a coat over the top of everything so it's going to get all those seal all that paper so if I want to come back in with more paint I can so I've got a little bit of a muddy page I'm definitely going to want to maybe brighten some of those colors up all right and so I'm going to commit and get this down on the page and sometimes when you're working this way with intuitive collage and found words, let it sit for a while. Don't feel like you have to adhere things right away. I tend to work fast and spontaneously, but sometimes you just need the words to, or in the images to sit for a while before it's 100% clear where they're going to go. I think I want the music on top and I'm going to let her just kind of hang off the edge of the page there all right get a little more matte medium over the top here I definitely much prefer the having my matte medium in a squeeze bottle easier to, to get out. So the more I mess with the burlap, the more those ends fray and come apart, which is super cool. I love having some of that texture on there. Also noticing that, you know, I've covered up a little bit of that orange from the sacred circle design. So thinking maybe I want to bring just a little bit of that back again. So I have that in a few different places around the page because it kind of got lost. And just instantly brightens up the page to bring some of these pieces back. So maybe I want to do that in a few different spots. Again, I can't tell you why I'm doing anything that I'm doing. I'm just really trusting my own creative process. I think what I'm really loving is just these little circles on here. Nothing like getting our fingers into our art. Making sure I have good coverage on this because I'm thinking I'm going to want to brighten up some of those colors. So now I feel like I've gotten it a little bit brighter. Maybe one more little piece along this edge here. Just make it feel a little bit more like that color is kind of framing the page a little bit. That feels a little bit better. Again, I love using my own artwork as collage fodder, right? Like I love to reuse things, but also it just makes it that much more original. No one else is going to have this you know, same piece or pattern in a page that they have created. So even though I'm using other people's art for part of this, a lot of this, it's all my own, my own backgrounds and collage bits. Okay, so it's an interesting page. I still feel like I'm going to want to add a little more white around, <coughs> excuse me, Freudus, good morning. 
all the way from Norway, or good evening. I guess it's evening time for you. So welcome. Just finishing up this spread. All right, so I'm going to get these words down on the page and then add those finishing touches. So this feels like a messy page much messier than I would normally create. But what I'm loving about this is the story that it's telling. Because I was feeling that sort of scattered, busy, a little bit of messy mind this morning. And this is such a powerful reminder to connect to my heart, to pause, to breathe, to relax. Making sure I get those pieces down flat and over the top of all that texture. Only from the heart can you touch the sky. Absolutely love this quote by Rumi. All right. So it's too wet right now to add anything else to. I'm still feeling like maybe I want um, to come in with a little bit of white and a few more marks. And I always get to that spot where it's like, okay, Minette, walk away, let it dry, give it some time. Loving this bits of orange bleeding through underneath. I'm wondering if I want to pop that out even a little bit more. So orange isn't necessarily one of my go-to colors, but it seems to be kind of the color of choice. It's one of those colors sometimes I create with just to challenge myself, to push myself out of my normal comfort zone. And adding just that those little pops of orange in here, is going to make this image stand out. So I was thinking white, but now I'm seeing that maybe having that dominant orange color come in just around the edges of this image here. Going to allow that to all just pop out and stand out a little bit more. And again, it feels like a much messier than normal page, but it's a page that really captures where I was and how I was feeling this morning and where I want to shift my energy and focus. I know that the answers I seek are in my heart. They're not in my head. And oftentimes, I know I certainly am really good at thinking that I can just think my way through things when the truth is I have to feel my way through them first. And so this is just a powerful reminder of that. Again, just brightening up those colors so that my collage stands out. All right, that's making me a lot happier. It's really starting to calm things down. Still getting the sort of nice grungy bits of color and texture shining through, but just by softening up and unifying the colors, it feels like my images are now popping out. Can frame it with a little bit more of that orange in that corner over there.
So it's amazing to me how creating spontaneously in this way, randomly chosen images, digging through just <clears throat> a bucket of words, that what happens here is a whole story that started with my morning journaling of just noticing that I was feeling a little squeezed for time, a little not knowing where I'm going next, you know, a little nervous about what's coming. And all I needed was to first do some writing, as I always do, and then to just sit here and play on the page to let the images and the story surface and the reminder of only from the heart can you touch the sky. So I am going to spend some time today connecting to my heart, asking my heart what it is that it wants, right? What is it that's missing? What am I seeking? What is it that I need? Those are some of the types of journaling prompts that I ask myself on a regular basis. So there is my happy, messy page. And I've been having a lot of fun playing with words this week. So I'm thinking tomorrow that maybe we will um, continue with our wordy play and do some found poetry. I love writing poetry. And sometimes found poetry is a, a fun way to get started. Just going to see if I can push some of that paint back. I don't know if I have enough matte medium on there or not. We're just going to let it be messy. All right, my friends, there is our spread for today, only from the heart can you touch the sky. So may your heart touch the sky today. Have a beautiful day. I'll be right back here at 7 a.m. Mountain Time tomorrow morning for some more maybe intentional found poetry and wordy play. Who knows what it'll look like? Only the journey will tell us. Have a wonderful rest of your day. This is Dr. Minette Riordan. This is Painting in Your PJs live Monday to Thursday at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. Have a beautiful day. Thank you.